Okay. <laughs> hey there, families. I'm really pissed off. I shot an entire video today, my weekly Sunday video. And when I um, threw it all into my editing app, I realized that, or I discovered that the battery on my mic is dead. So, no sound. Hey, Tyler. How's the sound, by the way? Am I loud enough? So, yeah. So, the battery on my mic was dead, so all the footage is wasted. I don't have time to shoot another video and then edit. I got to go to bed sometime before 2 a.m., you know? So, I figured... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, hey, Kelly. How's it going? Um, if you guys think I'm too quiet, let me know, and I'll, I'll crank the volume a bit. So... Since I can't do a normal video this week, uh, I will do a live stream. And since we're doing a live stream. Okay, Tyler. Okay. Since we're doing a live stream, and it's always a Beer, Blades, and Bushcraft live stream, the beer tonight is the Lion's Winter Ale by Granville Island Brewing. It's in Vancouver. This is a... Uh, Beer with natural flavor. Contains barley and wheat. Yes, well, it's beer. 5.5% uh, alcohol. Well, outdoor, the problem is, as I was just saying to people who got on on time, I shot an entire video and the battery in my mic was dead. So I don't have a standard video for this week. So I'm kind of, you know, kind of looks like I'm in a cave or something. Eh? Hold on, let me turn on a light a bit here. And I, I don't need these. Please note, I'm not stepping off camera. There we go. Just a little mood lighting. Just a little mood lighting. So yeah, so it's Lion's Winter Ale because I'm feeling cold and dark and wintry. Because I'm pissed off that I shot all that video and I didn't get anything useful out of it. So what I was going to say in the video, first of all, let's try this beer. I've never had it before. Okay, winter ale, impress me. Oh, it's not bad. Kind of caramelly, but just like on the top. It's got a nice brightness. A little hint of spice of something, but not, not too much, like just a little touch. And apparently... The <coughs> Excuse me, this robust ale pairs up perfectly with comfort foods. Okay. It's a dark ruby color, but I can't see that because of the bottle. Anyway. Outdoor, you're late. Don't ask too many questions. Just, just go with me on this one. So what I was going to talk about on my episode was um, that because I usually put up a live stream and then take it down. Um, I was going to sort of go over a couple of the things we, we talked about during last week's live stream. Um, one was that for this, <coughs> for this, I, I went and got um, <coughs> a piece of leather, had tandy leather. Um, my next step is to um, acquire some beginner, very simple beginner um, leather making tools like a knife, um, edging tools, stuff like that. Cause I want to do it right. Even though it's going to be my first, uh, my first sheath, I still want to do it right. Cause I definitely did my first, uh, bridge bark handle, right. You know, um, the second thing I wanted to, to talk about was that those of you who were ragging on me about the never, <laughs> um, the lack of, uh, progress on the workbench. I went and got to, uh, Cold fasts today from Lee Valley. These are by Gramercy Tools, made in the USA. If that's something you you're into, as you guys know, for me, USA, UK, Latvia, they're all foreign countries. So, um, but I like the fact that it's made in North America. I'm looking forward to getting this bench done, man. And these are heavy. They're good. For those of you who don't know, the way um, these work is. Um, the, the bench that I'm building right now that you guys see in the background of all my live streams, um, for now it's going to be a viceless bench. 
So if you if you don't have then you need to hold fast. What you do is you 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 put these into the holes on the on the bench top. You give it a bang right here with um, with a mallet, and it holds the work tight. And then to loosen it up again, you bang it here, and it just sort of bobs it. And then you can take your work out. Um, so I got two because you kind of need two. I mean, unless you have bench dogs or <coughs> excuse me, bench dogs or something. But I I don't I haven't bought bench dogs. I two hold fast should be fine. Um, Ah, Khalil, you need to come with a with a drink. Is anyone drinking anything? There's only like one or two of us on, so. Oh, Khalil's broke. Yeah, I've I've been broke. Uh, I was very broke a couple of years ago. All right, Tyler grabbed a, a pop. No, it's because I'm upstairs. Um, I, the bench is, the bench will progress at some point. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, this weekend, nothing happened on it because I was gigging. And when I'm gigging, you know, I get home at three or four in the morning. I the next day is a write off. I'm usually dead until Wednesday, you know. And we play Friday and Saturday nights. So. Oh, Tyler's got an early wake up tomorrow. Technically, so do I, I but not that early. I get up at 6 15, get the girl stuff ready for school, get her to school, go to work, you know. Um, yeah, no, it wasn't made from a crowbar. It's made from bars, uh, like um, round bar stock, you know. Like they're, they're they just sort of they bend it and then they, they flatten out the end. What's nice about this is um, it's not a cast uh, hold fast. A lot of, of affordable hold fast these days are, are, are made of cast steel, and they're very fragile. They shatter, you know. Um, for a true forged one, it costs a mint. So this is sort of uh, like a happy medium. They're they're robust. They get great reviews, and it's it was fifty two Canadian dollars for two of them, you know. At Lee Valley, that's not a paid endorsement, by the way. Um, but another thing I wanted to ask you guys about. Ah, oh, outdoor. Good thing CMO's not here or you guys wouldn't be giving me a break at all. Yeah. Um, but what I wanted to ask you guys, and I'm going to leave this video up for a while, uh, especially because like, we keep losing viewers here. I think we're down to just a couple of us now. <laughs> But what I wanted to ask you guys is, I have this idea for 2019 that maybe what I'll do is do all my initial unboxings as live streams instead of like videos. I don't know. I mean, it, it was just an idea I had while I was sort of pondering the next year. What do you guys think? Outdoor Dauber's learning binary, I see. So I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm going to ask that in the, um, like, you know how you can make posts in, in YouTube and stuff now? But I don't know. I think it's a, it's a concept. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I'm just taking a look, making sure I'm not missing anything here. I'm also going to rename this this live stream one day when it's over. You know. <coughs> ah, blech. Yeah, you like unboxings on his live streams? I don't know. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty cool idea. I think. I'm not I'm not against it. Like I'll come up with a different name for those. Like I don't want. Like I, I like having the beer blades and bushcraft live stream for a very specific. Tuesday night live stream and come up with something like just live unboxing or something for, for those, you know, so that it's not the same series.
This is good. Um, Granville used to be um, a microbrew, but the reason we can get their stuff here now is they've been bought by, I think it was Molson, um, which opened up their, their distribution in a big way. Yeah, more vlogs with, with Steph in the Woods. Absolutely, that's going to happen. That's absolutely going to happen. Um, I was just talking to him recently. Uh, it's it's tough right now um, on a couple of fronts, but we're we're going to definitely get out there again. You know what I'd like to do it by the end of this year? Like for next winter, so I would love to have a hot tent. You know, put up a hot tent like as a semi-permanent shelter somewhere. Tyler, man, you make that you make that haversack, and I will video the crap out of it. Um, I, I was watching a cold cracker video, and it was his um, the one where he's packing for a hammock camping trip. I don't know if you guys all watch cold cracker, but he's great. I love him. He did steal my live stream name, or two thirds of my live stream name, though. So I kind of gave him crap for that good natured crap. <laughs> Um, but he says, you know, you, you gotta have a haversack with you. you. You, you throw it in your backpack so that if you're just stepping away from camp for like the afternoon, you don't have to, <clears throat> you know, you can just throw a haversack on, throw like a few things in there so that you got like your first aid kit and like a couple of emergency things. And you got a bag to carry stuff. If you're getting edibles or picking up some you know, Tinder or something. And I've never done that. <coughs> Excuse me. I've always just taken my backpack and then kind of had to use my pockets when I when I go away from from base camp for an hour or two or three or four. Um, so I've I'm sold on the concept of a haversack. And I'm I'm gonna try to add that into the toolkit for, for 2019 as well. Uh, coal cracker is in, yeah, coal. Is that why he's called coal cracker? Because I've been trying to figure out what his name means. Like, I don't know what a coal cracker is. Unless that's, is that a coal miner? Outdoors met uh, coal cracker. Um, what the hell's coal ca cracker's name? Wolak, but what's his first name? Tyler. Dan Wolak is his name. Yeah. Hey, Jackie Blanchard. Hey, how's it going? I am... Um, I was just telling the guys that I'm having this impromptu live stream because I shot an entire video for today talking about uh, some holdfast I got for the workbench that I am one day going to finish. Uh, talking about some leather I got to handle this knife that I had to make a sheath for this knife I made for my girl. And asking if I had this concept for 2019, I would do all my unboxings as live streams instead of episodes. Um, Outdoor says he likes the idea. What I'll do is once this video is over, um, I'll add that into the title somehow. Maybe I'll put like a, a poll. You know, when you make posts, you can, you can add a poll to the, to the YouTubes. Okay. And Outdoor Dauber is telling me why Coal Cracker Bushcraft is called Coal Cracker. I was also describing the beer that I have tonight which I, I have never had before, but I'm enjoying greatly. Lion's Winter Ale. I, I like having stuff from Vancouver because I used to, that's my old stomping grounds when I was young. Yeah, Jackie, what, the first thing I did was we have a Tandy leather here. So I went and bought just like a, it's not, a, it's not quite an off cut. It is an off cut actually. Hold on. You keeping track there, uh, outdoor? I just bought um, my buddy Robin and I. Um, 
we bought one of these together. It was much longer than this, and we just each took half. Uh, he's already made a couple of um, strops with his. I got this to make um, an axe axe mask with, but um, I need to make a sheath for this knife, so I'll probably do that as my first leather craft um, project. No, oh, that's only one out of frame. You need tougher leather? Do you have some... Uh... No, it's not two. It's one. That was one. Because I was... I was acknowledging it and then continuing out of the frame. You can't, you know, you can't call that two. I dispute that. Dan has a video about his, his YouTube name? Okay. I don't care about the populace. I don't care, but this is my live stream. Oh, going to, but I didn't step off screen for that. I, I was right. You guys are cheating on this, man. You guys are cheating. Jackie, you see what I have to deal with? These guys doing this, this this cheating thing. You're not running nothing, because all I have to do is hit this button right here, and this whole thing comes to an end. Already be take over my butt. And you can't have a takeover because Simo's not here. Okay. <laughs> Jackie's having the white wine tonight. Okay. Um I was keeping this for Tuesday because I don't usually live stream on Sundays because I usually put a video up on Sundays. But uh, I guess now I have to buy something else. For, I guess now I have to buy something else for Tuesday. Oh, is he? <laughs> yeah, where the hell is Simo? He's usually like, he, he'll drop anything to get onto a live stream. I don't get it, man. I just don't get it. But yeah, so I don't know. I'm looking forward to getting that workbench done and getting these these hold fasts into action. I'm just, I want, I need that workbench done. Um, I have many projects I want to do, but I, I made a decision that nothing happens till the workbench is done. You know? Hey, I'm not anti-union, but I will say one thing. None of you are getting paid to be here, so what's the point? Jackie, oh, the, the baby's great. She's, you know, she's a baby. They're all small, cute, smelly, and loud. <laughs> you know? So she's par for the course. She's still way smaller than Camille was when she was born, though. Because uh, Clements, I guess, has how you'd say in English. Um, or... Some people are already calling her Savannah in English because that's her second name. Um, but she came out at seven and a half pounds, which is a full two pounds lighter than Camille was. And her head was three centimeters um, smaller. I'm looking for the word. I'm, I'm sort of thinking in English and French right now. So she was much smaller. She's still smaller than Camille was when she was born. You know? Collective bargaining. Yeah. <laughs> Baby Clem. Yeah, I think circumference is the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Or no. Uh, yeah, yeah, the baby's healthy. The baby's healthy. There, there were some complications, but that's on the mom's side, not the baby's side, for once. Um, there was an issue at one point. They had to check the baby's heart because it was sort of there was an issue, but I, I think that most pregnancies have issues like that, you know? The mother is still on um, rest and meds, though, because there were some significant complications there, which I ain't going to talk about on the YouTubes. We can talk later if you want. But yeah, so I don't know. That's, that's pretty much all I, I had to, to say, really. I am... Um, looking forward to getting this leather into action oh yeah but that like i have to get a a little leather working kit for that so what i'm doing the, right now is i'm sort of researching what i can buy without spending too much you know because i'm not 
I'm not embarking on leather work as, as a career. So I don't want to buy like a hundred dollar knife and a hundred dollar this and a hundred dollar that, you know, if I can get some real simple tools, edging stuff, stitching stuff, um, you know, stuff like that, then I'll be happy. Epic meetup this weekend in PA. Oh yeah. You're doing the, um, the, uh, Bushcraft USA camp out, eh? I'll tell you something. I would not be want to be camping out in around my part of the country to this weekend. Jackie, you're probably just as cold there, eh? This is a cold freaking weekend. Oh, Jackie, you're already doing some leather work. Nice. I've never done anything. Yeah, cold. Yep. Very bloody cold. Like unseasonably cold. Like right now, it's supposed to be like minus 11 or something. It was minus 28 or something. Yeah, I wouldn't want to camp in it either. Unless at least I had a hot tent, which I would like to get this year. Like closer to the end of the year if I can. Oh, nice outdoor. We don't buy pork chops because, you remember, we bought a pig. <laughs> Our freezer is so full. Yeah, Jack, yeah, that would be a brisk hike. Yeah, I mean, I believe that completely. Damn, I'm enjoying this. The lions went to ale. Boom. Hammock with tarp and two wool blankets. Uh, 16 degrees... Freedom would be what in Canadian? I don't have my phone here, so I can't do the, uh, I can't look up the conversion. But if everything freezes at 32 F, then that, that's pretty cold. Yeah, that's pretty cold. Okay. And that's legit. Oh, it's only minus 8.8? Almost four inches of snow. Wow. We got snow, but not like that. It's nice to finally get snow. But then, of course, it got really cold. So it went from snow to, like, rock hard, you know? Uh, kind of slippery in some places. We had a harvest sale from Muskoka Brewery. I, I don't think I've had anything from Muskoka Brewery. Yeah, I find it weird when uh, when you guys down south are getting more snow than us. That, that's just kind of weird. Hey, Dr. Sharp. Ten inches. Wow. Jeez. Yeah, Jack, I'm with you. We have the same. We get some snow and then it all goes away and then it gets really cold. So it turns to black ice. Did I tell you guys about this? Last week. It was, I was on the way home from the hospital because the missus had to go back into the hospital quickly. So I was on my way home from the hospital and there was that kind of snow that falls and it's powdery as hell and makes everything slippery. Not because it's icy, but because it's so light and, Anyways, so I'm, I'm cruising home, <coughs> and I'm coming down the street, almost at home. And in front of me, there's a guy who's coming to, to you know, take a left-hand turn. And he blows his, his uh, stop. And I'm coming along, right? I'm, whatever, maybe 40 kilometers an hour. Um, and, like, he's halfway through his, his turn, and I can't stop. Like, I, I'm, I've nailed the, the brakes, and I just keep on going. Um, and he just sort of looks at me and keeps on going. I guess at that point, there's nothing he could have done anyway, but he didn't even really react. He just looked at me like an asshole and kept on turning. And I just, and I'm going right for him. And, like, in my head, I'm like, I can't destroy the missus's car right now. Because, like, we just had a baby. She was back in the hospital. Um, our daughter was wailing Laval to keep her out of the way for the moment. 
I just kept going for him and I just missed like, you know, if he's turning like this, I just missed him. Right. But I, I slid all the way through the intersection. I just managed to sort of poof off and I came to a stop right at the, the opposite curb and he just kept on going. And I was like, that's not being a very good citizen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, message retracted already. I got to make that t-shirt. I keep forgetting to. It's been, I've been so crazy busy lately, uh, but I'm going to make that t-shirt. Um, I don't know about the rest of Canada, but Quebec, it's all uh, no fault insurance. But uh, I, dude, I called him way worse things than Moose Knuckle. Let me tell you, I think I might have gone straight on for nutsack. But yeah, in Quebec, it's all no fault insurance. <clears throat> but it's it's not about the insurance. It's about we had so much on our plate that if we just added something else by me blowing the crap out of the car, our, our one car, because we recycled my car back in April, right? It just would have been one more thing to deal with. And we were like this at that point. But, you know, like I've grown up with no fault insurance, right? Because it's been that way here, I think, for longer than I've been around. So, meh, you know? I, <laughs> let me tell you. It was, uh, yeah. And it's funny because um, I don't know how many of you guys read my, my blog, but I blogged about this, not this incident, but another one. In a, in a fairly recent blog post where Camille and I were driving off to the missus while she was doing, um, she was working in uh, Sherbrooke, which is a, a couple, a few hours away, a couple of hours away, headed sort of east. I was going to say southeast from Montreal, but it's not really sort of, anyways, east. And we're in my old car because uh, the missus has her car, which is, our car right now with her but my car my old 98 camry um it was rusting out from under me man and the um the windshield wiper spritzers weren't working and so i've got cody in the seat be in her seat behind me and i'm sitting there and it's a really dirty snowy night slushy as hell and you know like when trucks and stuff are going by you get all these little brown spatters and you usually just <laughs> but because there was no windshield fluid coming out I would just smear to like this opaque mass and so I just kept having to pull off go into a Tim Hortons and I had a spritzer bottle with a uh, windshield wiper fluid and I'd wipe it down whatever or pull off to the side of the roads but what I was doing sometimes was I would throw on the wipers put the wind the window down and be like you know <laughs> and get like this much of the windshield clear anyway so I'm coming up to a T intersection and I'm coming, coming to turn. And again, what's, you know, this guy's coming this way and just, he's in a Jeep uh, Liberty, I think it was, just blew his stop. And he was going like directly for the, the passenger side door behind me, which is where Camille's sitting. And so I just, I just gunned it, you know, went around the corner and just slid sideways into the, uh, the, the snow embankment on the side, because here in Quebec, when they plow the, the, uh, the roads by the side of the road, especially on the highways, you end up with this these embankments that are like this high, you know, so boom, right into the embankment. God didn't even stop; he just kept on going, you know. And I was just like, I'd been stressed and scared and just growling and yelling the whole the whole trip, you know. I was just come oh, on, I'm like, you know, pull us out of the uh, out of the snow embankment. I, I just like letting loose with every French swear word you can think of. And uh, and I just hear this voice behind me, you know, are we okay? And I just sort of, I throw the blinkers on. I pulled over to the side of the highway and I just said, Camille, or she said, I'm sorry. I said, this isn't your fault. I'm not angry at you. I'm just terrified. And she said, me too, daddy. And I was like, you know what? If we survive this night, this car is gone. 
you know, and it's gone. We recycled it. I gave it to the, I think the cancer society or something and uh, it's gone. Jackie. Yeah, that's, that's my website, but um, I, that's not where I did the blog post. I have um, a rain dance bushcraft uh, blog at WordPress. Fook. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so, you know, it's just, I don't tend to blow stop signs. I've done it a couple of times. I just, I didn't see it, but, you know, you're essentially driving weapons. You know, you can really fuck somebody up. You can really mess somebody up with, with a car. Even like an Austin Mini. I mean, the classic one, not the new one, but like the cool classic one, you know? Hey, LT, how's it going? Hey, Papa, what up? Papa, have you been on before? I don't know. If not, then um, welcome. Yeah, swear account. Sorry about that, guys. Um. <laughs> Come on. One swear word and I'm suddenly a potty mouth. I realized I was rewatching the um, the video where Serge and I were making the bacon, I think. Or was it the steak one? It's one where I, I was I was having trouble doing something. Um, and I said tabarnak or kalisk or something. I think it was tabarnak. And that is probably the worst of the worst. Yeah, in terms of Quebec square words. And so I, I feel like I should have bleeped that, but I didn't I didn't even see it or hear it until I like the video was up and I was re watching it. This is not piss water, Mr. Tyler. When you're in the bath, bottom of the outhouse and looking up, you always know it's heading your way. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Leroy Hoots. <laughs> That's a good one, man. We should I should have a bottle of uh bottle of Jameson or something. Every swear word. Oh, okay. <laughs> um LT, the here's the thing. It's not really the theme is I shot a video. Battery in my mic was dead, so I didn't get a video. And I promised myself I would hit Sunday night. So what I did was I did a live stream and I talked about the things I was going to talk about in the video, which was the, um, I, I did a video talking about some of the things we said in the last live stream, because I, I tend to take down the live streams. So I, I talked about how I want to get uh, some leather making stuff, like a simple kit to do the, the sheath for the, uh, the stacked, um, birch bark <clears throat> knife with which I almost cut the uh, USB cable here. So I will put that over here. Showing off my uh, the hold fast I got for if I ever bloody finish that uh, workbench. And suggesting that I do for 2019 all of my unboxings as live streams instead of episodes, like traditional episodes. People seem to be liking that idea. Um... And if enough people like that idea, that's the way I'm going to do it. Uh, let me see. White wine, yes. Beer, piss water in the family. Do you use it exclusively for light-colored, non-chewy beers? Um, I don't know. You know, it's, it's, it's funny. It's not a term that we use, that I use very often. Like, unless we're talking about, you know, what up here we, we call American beer, you know, like the Coors or whatever. You know, um, but yeah, you know, like uh, it's generally up here. That word is reserved for beer from south of the border, whether or not that's deserved or not. I don't care. Um, like I, a standard alcohol content here is, you know, 5.5. I have no idea or five. 
I have no idea what a standard alcohol content of an American non-craft beer is, right? Because um, as soon as you get into craft beer, there's so much exciting crap happening down in the, in the States. But like, you know, whatever, Coors Light, PBR, stuff like that, you know. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Am I missing anyone? Anyone else on the free t-shirt? Are you kidding? Outdoor, you want me bankrupt? <laughs> Outdoor, don't get me in trouble. Don't make promises I can't keep. But yeah, I'm going to get that message retracted t-shirt made. That one, that one just has to happen, you know? almost finished this so what do you guys think do I live stream until 11 like I usually do do we go the whole hog make it a make it a full on live stream oh. you know it's funny because uh, Tyler will be here till 11 <laughs> okay I guess <laughs> I'm really looking forward to getting that workbench done. It's It's been months and months and months, and it's just stuff keeps getting in the way, you know? You know, life gets in the way, as it always does. And it's funny because, um, no, no, Tuesday night's still on. Tuesday night's the regular live stream. This one's just a fill-in because I, I just, I, I didn't have, I can't go and reshoot the video because what I did was I unboxed these, another unboxed, so, you know, I can't tape it back together and I, I got them at Lee Valley by the way not a paid endorsement but yeah I can't wait to get that bench done I think if I get the bench done I'll be so excited about the workspace that I will finally clear everything out you know make it into something really good to work in um hey Simone's here um Okay, outdoor. All right. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, and I would like to set up the workshop with some actual like video lighting, so that when I'm doing stuff in there and like say doing axe restorations or doing live streams or something, the lighting is is better. Uh, but it's like I don't want to do that until I've I've made the space better because right now it'll just show all the warts even more you know hmm so much with the good <sighs> sinuses are still going crazy what i've been sick for a month now i know warts are life but i you know it's funny because i'm a messy person i admit it the missus is OCD, just go put, okay? Um, and I don't mean in the colloquial sense. I mean, she literally is. Uh, she's come a long way in the, whatever, 15 or so years that we've been together. But so have I. And I look at my workspace now and I see the mess and it just makes me angry. Like, I don't mean I look at it and think, oh, but what I mean is I get really antsy. Like, I'm no longer comfortable surrounded by my mess. Fucking colds and flus and germs and kids. Yeah, kids, man. Holy crap. As soon as Camille was in daycare, we were sick all the time. And it just hasn't stopped, you know? Tyler, man. All this life gets in the way talk makes me think you need a decent break. Preach, brother. Joy ever. But that's really selfish because I'm pretty sure the missus needs a break too. So I, I really don't, I don't make a point of that, you know. I've got some schmutz on the screen here. Um, outdoor, don't make promises I can't keep, man. I can't go giving away free shirts. I just spent $81 sending an axe to Sweden. You guys will think this is funny. So I did um, an axe giveaway of the little red-handled um, Moor Maker double that I, I showed in a few videos and did a, a review of. It was just a, a real cheapo way of getting more uh, followers on my Instagram feed because I'm really trying to 
move that, you know? So the guy who won it lives in Sweden. So today I sent it. And I could have spent $48 to just, that's the cheapest way to send it by air. Um, I could have sent it by ship and that's cheaper, but it would take two months to get there. And I was like, no. I said, yeah, but no, I need a signature for it because you guys keep losing things. And so that bumps it up to $81. 81 something. And here's the thing. That axe was only like 65 Canadian dollars. I think it was 55 US. So it did kind of hurt to send it at $81, you know? Um, hold on, hold on. Um, okay, so a couple of you have early meetings. Uh, outdoor, I'm not giving away a Walters double bit with an octagon in 2019. Uh, the portable light you got? I don't remember what light you have, LT. What is it? Oh, yeah, well, Jackie, he won the axe, you know? I, I felt like I got to send it, you know? And I, I knew it was going to be expensive, but when I when she told me the price, I just sort of, oh, just twist the knife, okay? Um, but, yeah, I mean, it wasn't his fault that it's cost a mint to send anything, so. Yeah, Dr. Sharp sounds like it, right? Yeah, no, I went to Sweden. But... Uh... Posting stuff from Canada is expensive as hell. As hell. And we don't have that, um, you know, that flat rate. I'm going to start that again. You know, that flat rate box that you guys have, the USPS offers. We don't have anything like that. You know? <laughs> Outdoor, come on. <laughs> oh, the newer 160. Yeah, yeah. You received a gifted knife this weekend. Oh, you got hit with GST. What was the knife, Jackie? <laughs> yeah, you know, the thing is, I um, I decided that um, even though I don't care about, you know, New Year's or anything, I figured it, it, for my channel, it would be useful to buy into the New Year's thing and decide that for certain things, 2019, I'm going to make them work. You know, um, giving away that little Moor Maker axe was a, a good way to pump up my my Instagram followers without like buying followers. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, and the giveaway worked well. Um, I don't think I can do an $81 mail out every time, but I like I like giving stuff away to to my subs and my followers. You know. Um, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to this year get my broad axe. Um, I'm, what I'm thinking of doing is um, I've got a little Norland double, and I think I might offer it up on Axe Junkies uh, in exchange for a broad axe head in good, uh, like a hewing axe head in good shape. Wait, wait, wait. 55 bucks GST on a $40 insured payment, a shipment from the US for a $350 Matt Paul with Badger Claw leather sheath. Where'd you get this from? Where was the, who was giving the, uh, the giveaway? That sounds like a cool, um, that's a nice giveaway prize. <laughs> Oh, Outdoor is getting that that uh, buck saw tomorrow. Nice. Hey, Austin. Outdoor is right. No, Broad Axe will be given away each time he walks out of frame. You guys. Oh, you wanted that Bushcraft USA? Outdoor asked me what my Bushcraft USA name is, and I don't bloody remember. Hold on. Let me, let me just check that out, okay? 
push. Craft Canada, new. Craft USA. Boom. Okay, boom. What is my name? No, that's not my name. Log in or sign up. Let me log in. Let me log on in. Boom. Bam. So what is my name? My name is Jess Corbet. My name. My name is. My name is. Boom, boom. Um, I Yeah, I have. Man, I used to spend a lot of time at, at BCUSA. Here's the thing. Um, a few years ago. Around the time I, I, I lost my, my, my main gig and became extremely underemployed, I quit all my, all my, um, I stopped paying any attention to forums at all. BCUSA, I stopped going to. Talk base, I stopped going to. All the mountain biking, like everything. Because what was happening was, as a forum member, I was always seeing all these things I wanted, so I was spending money buying gear, music gear, in you know, at Talk Base or Bushcraft gear at BCUSA, and I had to stop that. So I stopped. Pay I stopped buying magazines because it was the same thing. You know, I'd be, be buying like hunting mags or mountain biking mags, and like, ooh, I want that scope or I want that handlebar or whatever. So I just stopped everything. You know. Um. So I haven't really been, like, I've checked out BC USA a couple of times, like, now that I know that Outdoor is on there, and, well, Jackie, you're on there, too. Um, but, like, I don't really know what to, like, I have a hard enough time keeping up with um, stuff on the Axe Junkies Facebook page, you know? And I, I want to be paying way more attention to the Axe Junkies page because I would like eventually to become a moderator there. You know, I, I think that I... I, I like the idea of being really hooked into that community because it's, it's a good community. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> good one, Jackie. Um, oh, Jackie, over there, you're still using Backpack Jack? Okay. By the way, why the hell did you change your, your channel name from Backpack Jack to uh, Jackie Blanchard? Oh, wait. Outdoor, what did you say? RDB takeover in 2019. Hmm. Still, eh? We're still on that. No, we don't have VAT tax. We have GST and PST. Yeah, Jack. You're totally right. Just find a good community, you know? Um... Oh, Leroy, are you, uh, do you do the, the musics? I, I, I was gigging this weekend, which is why I'm kind of zombie-like tonight. And, um, Friday, I got home at 4 and got to bed probably by about, no, I probably got home around a quarter to 4 and got into bed around a quarter past 4. Um, this morning, I got home at around 3.30, but I just went straight to bed. But man, I'll tell you, I'm going to be a wreck until Wednesday. I'm, you know, when I was 20, not a problem. But now that I'm 46, I'm like, oh. you know. You love the music? Yeah. What do you play, Leroy? Well, yeah, outdoor, there's that too. The, the whole new baby thing. Yeah, but it, that, you know. Yeah, okay. Yes. But. Like this weekend, because I've been gigging and kind of zombie-ish. Here's what's, what's happening right now is the missus takes care of the baby as much as she can. And I run around do, and do everything else because she's supposed to be on, uh, you know, rest and meds, you know. So I'm being run ragged, but I mean, so is she. But we've done this before, although last time we were both caring for the baby more because we were both, you know, fine. <coughs> But we've done this before. You, you know that a new baby is a lot of work. You know you're not going to get a lot of sleep, okay? And you just one foot in front of the other, you know? Whereas with the gigging, it's just, it just keeps getting harder and harder. And my hands aren't what they used to be. And, like, you know, dry skin. So that was bleeding while I was playing. 
you know, because it's split on a bass string. Bass strings are really savage, man. Take a guitar string and up the bitch factor. Yeah, it's 15% tax. It used to be 5% federal, and then the uh, the provincial was um, taxed on the price plus the federal tax. We were being taxed on a tax. Um, they changed the formula, so they're no longer being taxed on a tax, but the percentage we're being taxed by is the same anyway. Anyway, I'm, whatever. I'm not going to... It is what it is. Oh, Jack, yeah. I, that's right, now that you mention it. I'd totally forgotten about that. Uh, what did, what did I say that we're not sure if we're counting as a swear? <laughs> Jackie. Oh, is that a swear word? You know, I live in a country where on primetime TV, you can say shit. So I, you know, it doesn't happen very often anymore, but, you know, back in the day, it happened a lot on the CBC. So I'm not, a, I'm never really sure what counts as a swear word. I know a certain F word or a certain C word, what I heard an American call, see you next Tuesday. Um, those are pretty rough, but bitch, really? What the hell's erratics? You need to work on your, on your typing your, oh, Jack, are you a stay at home mom? Interesting. Bench, yes, I bench. <laughs> okay, Leroy. Uh, Jackie, that word is the worst of the worst in Quebecois. <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> mm. Right. I done finished it. You thought, what was a myth? Oh, the, that Tabernacle was the worst of the worst? What are Dr. Sharp and Simon talking about? Yeah, no, Jackie, that's not a myth. That's, that's the truth of the truth. The certain F word from English is used significantly in French, but it's not. it doesn't count as a swear word. It kind of means something's messed up, you know? If it's like F-A, that didn't sound like it made sense, but it does. Totally does. <coughs> and for the record, Quebecois swear words are so much better than <coughs> French ones. But, you know, yes, you know, funny thing, Simo, um, because Camille went to an English language um, daycare in our household for the longest time, the French word for a seal was a seal because <laughs> we didn't want her to bring that word to daycare. <laughs> Uh, French girl from New Brunswick. So she's probably spoke shack, right? Shack. And you finish in the other. Um, the sort of quasi official language of Montreal is very similar. I call it the local throat disease, where you start in one language and halfway through the sentence you've switched and blah, blah, blah.
Is this live stream sort of going out of control a little bit here? I think Jackie's somewhere in Ontario. Are you in the GTA, Jackie? I mean, I don't want to get too uh, too specific on the interwebs, but. Or do I have that right? Do I, am, I, am I remembering that correct, Jackie? I think you're somewhere in Ontario, aren't you? Somewheres in Ontario. In Oshawa, okay. Okay. So, yeah. Toronto ask. Toronto ask. I do feel the need for a little snack, but I'm not going to do it because that'll mean stepping off camera and that would make it or Dauber hit the binary again. So I'm just going to stay here. It suits my, uh, my martyr complex anyway to be like, oh, I'm so hungry, but I'm not going to eat because the art, the YouTube art, it's for you guys. It's for you guys. Any uh, buffering, by the way? Anyone experiencing any buffering? Quebec is an actual meme. What are you talking about? Jackie, I have a, an IMP that I got from Paul Bikima like last year. And I started doing a video of and then never finished. So I've got this open bag IMP. And I feel like I should probably do a video on it fairly soon. Very little buffering. Good. So I'm wondering, I, I think it was probably the phone. Oh, yeah. So funny thing, man. I I was looking because it's time for us to, to replace our phones. Like up at the top of the screen on mine, I have to go stabbing and stabbing to get it to recognize if I hit a button. And the missus, her phone doesn't even shoot video anymore. Um, so I, I checked out the price of new iPhones at, at the Rogers site. And they're just they're just too expensive. I don't know what we're going to do. I mean, I'm so hooked into the Apple ecosystem at that point, at this point, that even though I'm not a big Apple fanboy, I just, it's easier to stay in the fold. But man, like they've decided that the iPhone is going to be an aspirational product now. And I don't buy the iPhone as, a, as an aspirational product. There's nothing aspirational about it. It's just another freaking iPhone. It's just another freaking smartphone, you know? But, you know, um, it's funny, Jackie, because I, um, I went to, uh, there's a surplus here called uh, Surplus International um, because one of my subs who does a lot of videos on MREs and IMPs, I, he wanted me to pick him up a crate and ship it to him. And I Facebooked them and I said, you know, do you guys have by the crate? And the guy said, yes. And I said, how much? And he said, 10 bucks per IMP, so 100 bucks per crate. Or not a crate, but a, a box with 10 in it. So I said, genius. I'll be by tomorrow. What the guy didn't say was that they're bloody sold out. He had like eight IMPs left, but someone had already bought them. He said they get them in like once per month and to call again in two weeks. But the, here's the thing. I drove across town. If I'm talking to you over the book of faces, I'm saying, do you have these? The proper answer would have been generally, yes, here's the prices right now. By the way, we're out. You know? I'm kind of irritated. LT has a ton of IMPs and MREs. Good, nice. Um, Simo's going for the XR. I, I'd like to go for the XS because of the camera, but they're both they're both expensive phones. Like even the XR, it's still expensive for what you get, you know. Yeah, Jackie, we we recently got a landline back. We we got a voice over IP line, the, the very most basic, just because we're at a point where there's going to be. Um, Excuse me. We're at, we're at a point where there's going to be babysitters over, you know. IMPs would come in handy if there was an EMP. That I 
Austin, yes, you can. Outdoor Dauber IMP is an individual meal pack, which is what you guys down there call MREs. And I don't know what MRE stands for. Meal ready to eat, I think, actually. Haha. <laughs> So I got that right. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, I, I've seen a lot of like compare and contrast videos of uh, Canadian IMP as an American MREs. Um, I don't see a lot of MREs around here. I, I see mostly IMPs, but I don't. I don't go to a lot of army surpluses. Like, it's not the gun thing where I'm always checking out the stuff. You know. <laughs> Tyler gave up. I don't even think outdoor knows what which digits stand for which anymore. Uh, if you're going for canvas and away from nylon, um, so you're looking at what, um, like an an Isle Royale or something by. Um, let's see. There's Duluth packs, and then there's the other guys in Duluth that make the the Isle Royale. Which is a, a bag I've been, I've had a hankering for forever. What the hell's that company called? Um, Frost River, yeah. Um, both of which seem like they'd be great choices. I like the styling of the Frost River better, but LL Bean makes a canvas version of their Continental rucksack. It's like three hundred and fifty bucks. Um, which is oh, just over twice the price of their nylon version, which is a bag that I just love the look of. But there's this guy called Meandering Maker who I met over uh, Instagram. I put one of his bags in my gift guide. And in that gift guide, I'm pretty damn sure that there's a link to Meandering Maker. And his stuff looks fabulous. And like... The prices are a little more reasonable than the Frost River pricing, you know? Not a lot more, because look, with a canvas bag, you're going to spend some money. But man. Okay, hold on. Austin's looking at either of these. Hold on. You're looking to get a Frost River. Okay. Um, let me see. Let me say, no, I don't want to leave this site. Hold on, hold on, let me just... Is this how I get a new tab? Okay. Hold on here. I got to just do that again because I blew it. Hold on. I don't think you can go wrong with Frost River. I just think that um, they might be a little more expensive than... Uh... But then again, if you're looking at a very specific one, it might be... Yeah, look at that. Oh, it's only 240 bucks. That's a good looking bag. This is like a day day pack size, eh? Oh, that's good looking. Interesting with like the two pockets on the sides it's on the side there. So it's a pretty good size. So what is it about this specific bag that, that uh, hold on, or this, Hunter Orange Artillery bag. All right, see you later, L2. Let's see what this other Frost River bag is. Ooh, that is an obnoxious color. I love it. You are definitely not going to get shot while you've got that bag on your back. It doesn't look as... Um, one interior map pocket, two external slip pockets. Personally, for 40 bucks more, I like the Nesmic better. 
I'm just saying something though. Is it like, okay. 1056 cubic inches, whatever that means versus Where is the cubic inch? And, uh, oh, wow. Okay. I see. The Hunter Orange Box Utility Pack is way, way bigger. Um, yeah, see you Tuesday, LT. <laughs> Austin, I I like the looks of the Nesmuk pack better just because as someone who lives surrounded by mess, I love the idea of having more pockets to sort of organize what I've got. Um, what I would like to do, either as a live stream or do like a video on or maybe a series of stuff on it, I'd like to organize my, my bush stuff a little better. Excuse me, in that, um, that little Day Rock Scout I've got. But also, I'm thinking of doing an episode or a live stream or something excuse me, on putting together a small first aid kit that'll fit in something a Molly compatible to go on the side of that little uh, Day Rock Scout. Um, so to me, I see that Nest McBag, and I like the organization options of it more than the, that big orange um, utility pack because that that the utility pack has like one slip pocket one inside and aside from that it's just a big bucket the nice thing about that though is you can probably fit a sleeping bag and a tarp or a tent tarp and a tent maybe or something into it and still have room whereas i find that bags with more pockets sometimes it's a little more constrained but Austin, no, I did not see that that Canterbury video. Hold on. Uh, okay, hold on. Simone put it. No, I don't want to. Open a new tab. Yeah, but that's 134. Oh, it's 12 meals. Um, but these are the ones made for the civilian market, aren't they? Also, um, he's looking for IMPs, not MREs. What do we got? Because 134 plus shipping, you know. No, uh, Austin, one of my, one of my YouTube, um, one of my, my YouTube subs uh, wanted me to, there's a store here in Montreal that sells like actual military IMPs um, by the case. And I drove across town today to pick one up after verifying, you know, pricing and stuff over, with them over Facebook, just to be told that they had actually sold their last case. So I have to, the so he said to call again in two weeks because I get them once every, uh, every month. Highly irritating. I'm not into driving across town if I don't have to. Jesus, 40 bucks US? Is that per IMP or is that for a, is it an open case? Yeah. All right, see you later, Outdoor. I, I don't know, Jackie. It's just um, at this place, it's a hundred bucks for a case of ten. 
So if I ship it out to him, it'll probably be like 45 shipping. Cause he said that uh, a guy that he knows off of YouTube who bought one and who lives in New Brunswick, it was 45 bucks shipping. So it was 145 for a box of 10. Hold on. Canadian IMPs are 19 bucks each and up. Okay, but let's just say I bought... Let's just change this to Canadian dollars. So 54, 5304 for whatever that is. Add to cart. Let's check the cart. Yeah, so it's fifty three oh four for a beef macaroni IMP. There's there's no reason to to buy that, you know. And that's what that. So how much is shipping? Hold on, if I go to checkout. Oh, it's because I erased it, anyways. But like, as soon as I'm trying to ship something across the border, you know the story. <clears throat> Anyways, so what? Whatever. I'm gonna call them back in two weeks and say, "Look, do you have a, a box? Uh, do you have a case for me? Yes or no? Say yes. That's what I'm gonna say, and then I'll ship it out. Um, but yeah. So I'm. I'm uh, aside from that, Jackie, what, another thing we, I, we'd said before you came on was that I'm now sold on the idea of throwing a haversack into my day pack um, because of what Pole Cracker keeps saying. And uh, he did a video recently where he was packing for a, um, a hammock camping trip. Um, and by the way, his backpack for that camping trip is a backpack I very badly want. It's the uh, uh, the the Fjallraven, um Oh, I don't remember the name of it. It's the one that you can sit on, the one that's like a kind of boxy. What the hell is it called? I don't remember. Um, geez, what's it called? Um, but anyway, so um, his reasoning for having a, a haversack along for the ride is to just, you know, so you, you've got a bag to put on a few step away from base camp for the afternoon you're collecting tinder or edibles or blah you got to have a little first aid kit with you because what i usually do is i've got big pockets on my british combat smock i just fill the pockets with stuff but i like the idea of having a haversack better so this year i'd like to add a haversack into the into the mix it's in some way you know uh, awesome i've eaten the imps before yeah, so, that's uh, basic training, air cadet basic training, not army basic training. After the, uh... yeah, the stubborn. Hey, Tenenbaum, I just sent an axe out to Sweden today. That was very expensive. Yeah, the, the stubborn. Yeah, I'm dying for that pack. The, um... The one issue I find with the Stubbin is that, or Steuben, I guess, is the fact that the two little side pockets or side bags are a separate purchase. I mean, just throw them in and, you know, it bugs me that that's a separate purchase, especially because I'm going to want them, you know. Yeah, I have, I've never tried the Poutine IMP. I, I, would like to try that um, at some point soon. Uh, Austin, I like poutine as well, but I, I don't have it very often because I always like, I always get what, what I call the, the poutine hangover. It's like, oh, I feel like I've eaten a ton of rocks, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, 
Oh, your family bought you a new pack for Christmas. You see, Jackie, my family doesn't buy me bush stuff. Like, at all. Did you see anything interesting, uh, Tannenbaum? Um, but yeah, Jackie, what kind of back, what kind of bag did they get? Poutine should always be fresh, you know, and I, I agree. <laughs> well, we're ending in two minutes, Jackie, so you can hang in for, for two minutes. I am. Um, uh, I didn't bring up the axe. I had to ring the bell with again. Sorry, guys. But this is not a usual Tuesday live stream, so, you know. Um. Wow. A poutine with duck. Uh, to me, a poutine has to be the basic, basic. Fries, brown sauce, cheese curds, Um. you know. Everything else is just fancy stuff. And I'm not very fancy. Although I uh, am what my wife calls an expensive bitch. As you guys have seen by everything that I want to own. <laughs> but yeah, Jackie, what bag is it in the one minute we have left? Bottoms up. I'm going to check that. I wonder how much it would cost me to have a cheapy sent to me from Sweden. Oh, yeah. Nice, Jackie. Nice. I'm glad to hear that. All right. See you later, Austin. <laughs> yeah, okay, Austin. See you later. Let's go. 249 crowns? Oh, I see. It's sort of a, a more old school take on the same idea. Interesting. I wonder how comfortable it is to wear, though. Oh, Woods. Woods Convoy 65. I'll check it out. Green. Green was the important part. Yeah, Tenon Bomb. That looks cool. Nice. Oh, okay. It's 11 o'clock. All right. Um, see you guys Tuesday, I hope. Tuesday, 9 to 11, Montreal slash New York City time. Aside from that, sorry, I didn't get a regular video out this week, but it did kind of give us an opportunity to chat. And I, some of you guys I never see on Tuesdays, so I'm kind of glad I did this. Um, I'm hoping that next week I'll be back to normal videos. But for now, good night, everyone. I hope everyone had a good time, and I will speak to you guys on Tuesday. Thanks for hanging out.